Neil Warnock is a legendary English manager who's had a long and successful career. Today, we're turning back the clock and placing a 31-year-old Neil Warnock back at his first club, Gainsborough Trinity. Then we're going to replay his career. Do you think he'll do better than he did in real life? Gainsborough Trinity currently play in England's seventh tier. Led by Clayton Donaldson, they lost in this season's playoffs in real life. You've got to f***ing die to get three points! So can Neil go one step further? Sadly not. He only finished 11th place. I stick up for you lot every f***ing week in press. But in game, that's way higher than predicted. Perhaps he'll have better luck in season two. And it starts off well as Gainsborough win the Integro League Cup, the first trophy of Neil's career. But can he double the trophy count? Well, kind of. He wins the playoff final trophy by beating Marks United in the final to get promotion to the National League North. Now, in real life, Neil doesn't have a lot of trophies to his name, but he does hold the record for the most promotions in English football with eight promotions. So in game, we need Neil to beat that. And in the next season, he He's not far off as Gainsborough Trinity finished just outside the playoffs with Lincolnshire rivals Boston United getting promoted via the playoffs. But Neil does get that second promotion a season later as Gainsborough comes third but beats Spennymore Town in the playoff final. Doing it with 10 men is even more impressive as well. So surely a club higher up the leagues is bound to take a punt on Neil Warnock soon. He's got two promotions with Gainsborough Trinity. Well, next season... It doesn't happen because Warnock got sacked after losing support of the players just a few months into the new season. Gainsborough in the end did avoid relegation from the National League, but Neil was sacked when the team slid into the bottom four early in the season. I feel like it's been really harsh sacking Neil Warnock after he's got them two promotions and won them one cup as well. But this is a chance now for Neil Warnock to get a better team and prove Gainsborough Trinity wrong. After 18 months unemployed, Leighton Orient signed Warnock up late in the season and he guides them to League 2 safety. The following season, with a full summer under his belt, bringing the players in that he wants, he'll be able to show Leighton Orient what he can do. Which is leave the club three months into the new season to join Lincoln City instead, which are my team by the way. Genuinely, if the real life Warnock became available and Lincoln hired him as the manager, I think I'll be pretty happy with it, given his record of getting teams promoted. In his first half a season with Lincoln, he takes them to 17th place in League One, and the following season takes them up to 11th place. But I think the really impressive thing this season is that Bromley are eighth in League One. They've had a monumental rise in this universe. The following season doesn't start well for Lincoln and Neil Warnock gets sacked. To be fair, it wasn't a brilliant start to the season and Lincoln nearly did get relegated. But despite this, a League One rival took a chance on Neil Warnock as he becomes the Reading manager, helping them to 10th place in the table, but one point behind his former club, Lincoln City. Having joined in October, Neil didn't get the full season. But will he be able to take Reading back to the championship in season 11? Of course he can. Promotion number three sees our man head to England's second division for the first time. Or at least that's what you would have assumed. Instead, Neil does the unthinkable and leaves Reading at the end of his contract, which would make sense if the club was in financial ruin, but they're not. They came eighth in the championship, just missing out on the playoffs and one place ahead of his new team, Bournemouth who he joined in January as they sat in the bottom half of the league. It's an odd move and I can't explain it, but I really hope it works out for Neil. And maybe he knew what was coming because the following season, Reading dropped down the table a little bit, but Bournemouth came third and got into the championship playoffs. This was a chance for Neil to get himself to the promised lands of the Premier League. But he lost to Middlesbrough 4-1 on aggregate and then was sacked six months later after a poor start to the new season. Funny how things turn out in football, right? But Neil Strike is the kind of man who likes the finer things in life, which is why his next job is in France with Le Havre. Which I know full well that I've completely pronounced wrong, Please don't bring it up in the comment section. He guides the club to third place in the table and a playoff spot, but ultimately fall short losing to Nantes in the playoffs. But he clearly impressed in France and was headhunted by Bordeaux of Ligue 1 and guided them to safety, just. The following season, he makes some progress and takes Bordeaux to their highest finish of the 2030s. Perhaps he's finally found the club for him that's going to let him flourish and he'll win his first trophy since the Gainsborough Trinity days. And there is some slight progress for next season, 
but he still can't win a cup, losing in the 11th round to his former club, Le Havre. Perhaps this isn't the perfect club for him after all, so he decides to leave to go to the city of culture, Florence for less than six months before he gets sacked. It wasn't even that awful of a start to the season under a new manager. They were 13th when he got sacked. But his next move is really interesting. A little behind the scenes of these videos, I always load up Europe's top five leagues, Scotland, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Portugal. I feel like it gives us a good mix of leagues, and it's very unlikely that managers are going to go outside of these countries. But when I set up this database, I forgot to tick Portugal. And of course, that's where he goes next. And of course he goes on to win the Super Cup, the Domestic Cup, and the league title. But because I've not got the leagues loaded up, we cannot see any data from this season, which is really annoying. The good news is he only spent one season in Portugal because he got headhunted by Tottenham Hotspur. His first season though was atrocious as they finished 12th in the table, and his second season wasn't much better as they came 11th. Spurs are no longer a top six club, but these were two of their worst finishes in the last 20 seasons. So of course, the inevitable was coming to Warnock after some really poor finishes. He gets offered the Man City job instead and misses out on the league title by goal difference, which is absolutely agonizing. It's even worse knowing that Newcastle knocked them out of the Champions League semi-finals as well. And they might have been his best chances to win a trophy, as the following season, Man City slipped down to fourth in the table and could only reach the Champions League quarterfinals, as well as losing the League Cup final and the FA Cup final, both on penalties. If things had gone slightly different, Warnock could have had multiple trophies at this stage of his career. The following season, they slipped down to fifth and get knocked out of the Champions League round of 16, and this was enough for the board. They sack him. He then takes an entire season off before being offered the Everton job at the start of season 27, and then repays the faith the board showed him by winning the Carabao Cup against their bitter rivals, Liverpool. Their first trophy in seven years. Wait, hang on, my, my notes say seven months. That's because the year Warnock got sacked from Man City, Everton won the league title, Everton went into the Champions League, which they won last season, beating Newcastle in the final. Football manager is it's just weird sometimes. And although Warnock challenged for the title with Everton, he couldn't win it. Maybe Everton just aren't the right club for him. Maybe he needs a job with a little less pressure, which is why he resigns to take the England job. This was an England side, by the way, who had just lost the World Cup final to Brazil on penalties. <sighs> this game just has a sense of humor sometimes, doesn't it? In the build-up to the 2052 Euros, he won 15 out of 16 games, including the UEFA Nations League final against Germany. So naturally, Warnock guided England to get knocked out of the European Championship second round to Switzerland in extra time. Obviously he was sacked after that because it's not a great showing at an international tournament. But naturally, Chelsea were waiting in the wings and offered him the job as he guided them to fifth place in the table, but more impressively lifted the FIFA Club World Cup title in an incredibly tight match. He followed up the next season with the 2054 FA Cup, which was enough to earn his place in the English Hall of Fame. Although not in the top 10, which is all we can see in game, so he's not that good. But rather than ride off into the sunset after the FA Cup victory, he couldn't make progress for next season, finishing fifth, which was not good enough for the board, resulting in his sacking. And as a result of that, Neil Warnock left management forever. Seven cup wins, three promotions, and one league title in Portugal is a cracking career, but it could and should have been so much more for Neil. But how does this compare to other managers that we've replayed? Well, recently we did Sir Alex Ferguson, and you can watch it right now to see if Neil Warnock does better than the GOAT.